Hey Jim, did you see this email about the 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 the, the DMs Guild code thing? Oh yeah, let me see it real quick. No, we oh, got yeah. uh we got a code for our viewers. Uh How weird, if they use Web we? DM Guild over on yeah. DMs Guild between April 5th and 12th of this year, uh -huh. they're gonna get 15% off $15 or more on uh DMs Guild Community Creator PDFs. Bobby, I weren't we just about to shoot a video over some of our favorite DMs Guild content so that we could let people yeah, know like where literally, a good place to start like right it. now. Let's let's tell you what, let's That's we're what gonna we're shoot a video on our favorite uh, DMs Guild uh uh, products here on uh, WebDM. All right, Jim. Let's uh, let's 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 finally have a conversation about uh, about DMs Guild. I know we mentioned it uh, in shows and podcasts previous, but uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but this is something that's been brewing up for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I. I... I know that there uh, we have gotten a lot of requests about like you know where where do we start or or what do uh, you know what do you and I think about um, you know DM Guild and things we use on it and personally I love the DM Guild I love all the things that you can find on it mostly because Fifth Edition has a lot of gaps in its core rules a lot of vagueness and and DM Guild is this place where like fans and content creators and game developers of all uh, skill levels and experience levels get to come together and like put their stuff out there put it on display say hey come and check this out and it gives you this like platform or, or sort of forum to sample these things to see what it is that uh you might want for your game and incorporate mm -hmm. it in there and while there might be some you know rough around the edges mechanics because of the variable nature of the products that are on there like with anything you basically, you play test it for your group, you adjust as you go, you read it, you compare whatever you find in there, uh, to, you know, to, to what you consider balanced for your gaming table and like, let yourself be inspired by all of the stuff that's on here and everything that's on this platform, because there is a wealth of options for your games and so many different ways that you can find a product on there to, to take your game in a different direction or open up a new avenue for uh, you know, adventures and gaming at your uh, at your table. That's um, that's one of the reasons why I, I really love it and like the stuff that I found on there. Uh, yeah, yeah, we do. Um, and we had this uh, this call from our fans, and then uh, DMs Guild approached us and basically wanted us to do a video to just kind of shine yeah. a spotlight on some of our favorite products. Absolutely. And so that's, this is, you know, they are, they are we sponsoring are. this video. So let's, uh, you know, let's, we're, we're just going to kind of keep this in kind of the range of the big three of, uh, mm -hmm. of, you know, kind of like players options, DMs options, and like kind of a yeah. monster manual to kind of mirror the three core books. So let's, uh, Jim, let's start with the players option. What's, what, what, what do we want to shine a spotlight on today? So there was one that I uh, found recently called the Adventurer's Domestic Handbook. And yeah. at first glance, you might think like, Jim, what are you talking about? Like, I like this is this does not seem like what, what, why, why do we want like romanceable NPCs and how to raise a family and sort of start a home in in my in my Dungeons and Dragons game? And I, a couple of ways to respond to that. Number one, like <laughs> the fact that <laughs> you, you you have a game like Dungeons and Dragons, which could be anything. Like I'll, I'll, yeah. I think the popular conception is it's monster hunting and monster fighting, and, and that's the end of it. But it doesn't have to be just that. And the fact that D and D as a, as a game spawned the entire genre of role playing games, which encompasses in theory anything, shows you mm -hmm. that anything is on the table to incorporate into your Dungeons and Dragons games. And I play a game uh, called Pin Dragon. It's not D and D. But Pendragon, you play a, a feudal knight who has a manor and serfs, and you got to get married and have kids. Your kids are going to be your second and third characters. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of that game centers around domestic life. And, yeah. and as I've played that game and, and how much just conflict and drama and adventure and, and just opportunities for amazing role-playing comes from the fact that you have this, like, house and a household to manage as a player and then sort of mm -hmm. portray as a character it, it only solidified in my mind like this is something that you could bring to your D, &D games this sort of style of, of 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 
you know, adventure and, and of, of portraying your adventurer's life and portraying the campaign world that can open up a whole new vista for it. So the Adventurer's Domestic Handbook um, has rules and guidance for romancing NPCs, for pregnancy, for childbirth, for child rearing, uh, for starting a business, for running a business, owning your own mm -hmm. uh, you know, land or, uh, you know, having a manor of some kind and and like really takes first it takes a very mature and 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 play centered approach to it a lot of great advice in here about like how to actually um run a romance at the table in a mature way that doesn't devolve into just like jokes or crossing people's lines making people uncomfortable you know or or uh you know something like that and so i i found that um reading through this i got a lot of just really interesting ideas for how i would incorporate these into a game right like i feel like the yeah. content in here is really well suited for like long-term play or smaller groups you know where it's like we're gonna sit and stay with these characters for a while like we want to know what's going on when they're not adventuring where do they come from what are their families like do they mm -hmm. relate to their families back home are they running away from something do they have a family that they've sort of put together themselves created out of their friends and, and, and you know people they're close to uh all of that is on the table with this and then it also provides like a lot of really cool ways that you can expand these uh ideas and like how you know have a mechanical expression for them that i found really interesting and engaging oh yeah most definitely like when you said uh like smaller groups when i was reading through this i was seeing like because we've, we've done many games where there's like maybe two players and that's it. And this mm. would be, uh, to me, in my mind, I read it and I go, well, that is a perfect thing to drop this over. It lets you yeah. expand the world out and let you uh, focus on each of those characters, whether they're married to each other or married to sure. other P NPCs. It doesn't really matter. You can have like this this just expansive experience where like they're having to worry about their manner and the people who work there and their business and like if profits are down you know like you, there there are, there are rules for you know hey sometimes you can have a bad quarter or whatever mm -hmm. and uh and also one thing i really love is the like the marriage ceremonies there are many different kinds of ceremonies that offer these benefits that right. you can that that are kind of they're they're small benefits but once you start adding them all up because there are various spots uh whether it's you're talking about the manor and various rooms that give you bonuses on if you spend so much time here between adventures uh mm -hmm. there are feats that if both people take them there's this added bonus where like one of them is like you basically can cast sending to each other once a day as right, it's just kind right. of it's like a long distance romance kind of thing where you know <laughs> your your long distance partner is your quote-unquote guy in the van and you're out adventuring right. you're like hey i got a thing i need to i need to take care of and they're like all right let me get on that you know and you can kind of have that um uh -huh, I, I don't uh -huh. know i just uh that along with the the backgrounds i i found like some really great like normal people backgrounds that yeah uh, yeah there's a lot of just really, ordinary folks yep. just ordinary folks <laughs> trying to make a way in the world, you know? Um, but I don't know. It's just, just uh, maybe I'm a little, little, little swooned over, uh, over the recent Marvel shows and, and getting to spend time <laughs> with people in their everyday lives. <laughs> but I don't know. I get this, this kind of really strikes a chord with me uh, as well. It, yeah. Same, same. I, I like a campaign that, that can breathe. And one of the things about fifth edition that, that is always kind of rubbed me raw is how fast paced it is in terms of what it would be like from my character's perspective, right? Yeah. Like there's there's something to be said for a fast paced session for the player's benefit. So the players aren't twiddling their thumbs and getting bored or whatever. But I also like to spend time with my character when they're not in moments of danger or peril, right? I like, you know, what's going on on this random day on the road or what's just an ordinary day in your character's life like. Like I enjoy those things because as a, from a dungeon master's perspective, it gives me time to sort of like inject little bits of setting into, into it shows what the everyday is like, uh, for the setting. Um, and from a player perspective to sort of like, well, what is my character value? What, what are they like when it's not <laughs> life or death or, or, you know, the fate of the world is on the line or something like mm -hmm. that. Like who, who are they as a person? And and what I found in here was all sorts of ways to support that and, and mechanically express sort of what's going on. Like, okay, my, 
my character is building a home. They they won some land because they were given that uh, plot of land as a, as a reward for something valorous they did or something worthwhile they did from the local noble or city mm -hmm. or whoever, you know. What do they value? What are they spending their time building? Who who do they value? Who whose relationship in their life do they value? How how do they spend time with the people that they care about? To to come back to Pendragon for a minute, a lot about Pendragon is based around your character's passions, who they love, who they're loyal to, what they value. And and to bring that attitude to, to D D and to say, like, my character fights for these people in their life. Mm -hmm. They fight for these things they're passionate about. They fight for these bonds that they have forged. This what what keeps them going when they're when they're uh you know in a life or death situation isn't that they know they're a hero in a fantasy RPG, it's that they have someone waiting for them back home, or maybe in the next room, right? Or maybe beside them in this yeah. moment of danger, you know, and and to be able to have support to play that kind of character and to have that influence play while at the same time I'm dodging beholder eye rays and casting magic rituals and traveling across the plains. Like it's the mix of the mundane and the ordinary and the day to day, -to -day with the fantasy, with the, the larger than life aspects of these fantasy worlds that I really, that really love. And, and I could think of a lot of ways to use the, uh, uh, the stuff in here to enhance a game. Mm -hmm. Uh, very cool, especially the the uh, the runaway betrothed background. Uh, <laughs> see a yeah. lot of good, a lot of good times to be had out of. I I noped out of that one real quick, uh, and now I'm an adventurer. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and you know, with the housing market, what it is, uh, owning a home is a lot more fantasy to most people. So hey, this is a this is a good way to actually exercise that. Just saying. <laughs> Right, like let's not. Right, we're going to talk about the fact that the real fantasy of D and D using the Adventurer's Domestic Handbook is owning a home, having a large family, being able to provide for them, and having a fulfilling and engaging life of adventure that's not like too stressful. I, there, yeah. it really is in many ways the real fantasy of D and D is home ownership and having a large family. So. Uh, yeah. Kudos to uh, uh, to the developers and authors here. Uh, that the Adventurers Domestic Handbook uh, by Lydia Van Hoy, Sadie Lowry, Sierra Perry, and Kayla Balins. Um, check it out; it's really cool. Lots of good stuff there. Yeah, most definitely. Um, and we also have some uh, we also have some honorable mentions for uh, player options. Uh, so we at least want to put these on your radar. Check them out at yeah. your leisure. Uh, the first one is called Cursed Classes. This is for anyone who wants to play anything from an animated suit of armor or flesh golem to like a lycanthrope or a vampire. Like these are full classes, not not a race. You are a 20. You can be a 20th level vampire. So a lot of options in there for that. That's a fun one. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, others for me, if you're uh, looking to check out uh, other ways to expand your uh, your player options, would be the Complete Armorer's Handbook uh, from Heavy Arms. Uh, go and check that out. There's a lot of really cool ways to, like, approach equipment and your gear, upgrade things. And so for those of you looking for more, like, combat-focused uh, options for your character, that is another one uh, that is worth checking out. And uh, and the last one we have here is uh, more put, to put more of a, a sci-fi slant on your game, but uh, alien influence uh, it'll have a massive effect on your game and uh, upgrading it to more of a sci-fi setting. But it's it's in a pretty small package, uh, so it's not a lot to uh, to digest. But uh, a lot of <laughs> a lot of fun ideas there for uh, armor and weapons upgrades, stuff like that to to do that. Um, and so that's the player's option. That's for uh, if you want to if you want to slow that game down uh, and really kind of just take your time with it. Uh, the other place that we do that is over on Patreon, uh, where we're we're not trying to fit in uh, what we want to talk into like a like a thirty minute bubble. We uh, we have a weekly podcast where we talk for an hour and a half sometimes. Um, so check out Patreon, uh, support us over there, and you just get more content. So, uh, but anyway, uh, back to uh, back to the 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 lecture at hand. Uh, let's go into yeah. more DM rules expansions here, uh, uh, Jim. Uh, what's yeah. what, what do you got for us for uh, to help the DMs out on that side of the uh, the screen? Yeah, yeah. I think like this is one of the areas where I find just a wealth of options uh, on the uh, on the DMs guild. And what I'd like to talk about right now that I've gotten some uh, 
good use out of a lot of inspiration from is uh, Tim Bannock's Old School Hacks Volume 1 Hex Crawling. And I found uh, Old School Hacks to be a good balance between like presenting the, the, the purpose of why you would want some structure to exploration, what exactly mm -hmm. is a hex crawl, right? Like it's not just adventuring in the wilderness, very specific type of adventuring in the wilderness. And, and sort of solid advice on how to run one and why you would want to run one without being overly prescriptive or formulaic uh, in its approach. Um, mm -hmm. And so in that sense, there's, it, you know, there's lots of discussion of like variants of, of, of say, presenting a, a hex crawl setting of, of how you, say, have adventure sites, what's the difference between it, an adventure site and procedurally generated encounters are for. Um, and so it's just like a really, really solid a uh, book of of like guidance for dungeon masters who who have that DIY spirit who want to create something of their own. One of the things I really enjoyed about it is the uh, the, the sections on building regional encounter tables and the various ways you might want to have the dice distributions, uh, ways to portray like what the environment is like, the effect of the creatures on the environment through your tables. And so I, this is a subject that I don't think I'll ever get tired of thinking about or, or talking about. So it was really good to sit down and have someone to kind of like lay out all the options and, and offer a step-by-step -step process for like, here's how you can create one uh, of your own. Now, do they actually uh, use the phrase hexploration? Is that, is that... Is that part of the uh, the canon there? <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. We we've talked about hex crawling a lot uh, uh -huh. in various shows, uh, podcasts, or shows on YouTube here. But I mean, anything that offers solid structure for that area, which it's it's a whole last pillar of play. Um, you know, uh, yeah, you, yeah. You know, you don't have to use all the rules, but you you know right. you can have like the 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 rules that are presented though. Are, are pretty solid and um, yeah and uh like what um isn't there like a like a whole like sample town or uh yeah yes yeah there's a whole I mean, there's like not just, there's a sample town there's a sample region uh yeah. so if you're looking to see what it all looks like in in you know once it's put together uh there's there is a like easily half the uh half the book is these sample encounter tables uh, to go with this sort of like starting location and then the various regions around it. What I like about things like that is you can either run it as is and just like build off the back of, of someone else's work to, you know, to run your own thing. You can use that as a template for sort of like, okay, this is what it looks like when it's all put together uh, or, or some way to sort of like mix and match of approaches because Mm -hmm. I find as a dungeon master, a lot of times I'll sit down and I've got a lot of ideas for what I want to be in a region. I've got a lot of ideas for, you know, different encounter types or adventure sites or things like that, but it's not quite enough to like carry the entire adventure, especially if we're going to be spending a lot of time in a region or something. So having a fallback of like, all right, well, I, I've, I've created things that really inspire me. They're really going to get my juices flowing. They're really emblematic of what I'm, I want to do in terms of theme or tone or bringing a setting to life but like i just am not going to also fill out the the other dozen entries on this encounter table <laughs> that i'm making so having something like this where i can fall back and go okay i think these are also interesting here's how i'll modify them here's how i'll change them up and and just sort of like the mixing of my ideas with someone else's ideas uh, i find is very very fruitful for uh, some great sessions and a dm tool like this is invaluable because eventually you use it enough or you use the guidelines in here enough, it just becomes second nature to you. And you can easily just like throw together little mini sandboxes and the like using tools like uh, the old school hacks here. Uh, just a couple of honorable mentions here. Uh, another one in the series, uh, Old School Hacks Volume 3. The, this has just tips for tricking out mega dungeons. And just it, it's it's pre it's pretty expansive too. And it's, yeah. uh, it's a nice list of uh, just... All the fun things that you can just sprinkle throughout your mega dungeon just to keep your players just like frustrated and angry. <laughs> yes, yes. Otherwise known as engaged. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, another one of these uh, rules expansions that I really, uh, really enjoy is the uh, Puzzles, Predicaments, and Perplexities series. Like, I really love a good puzzle uh, in, yeah. in an RPG. I'm terrible at coming up with them. Just absolutely garbage. Riddles, puzzles all sorts of things so having 
uh, any kind of resource where it's like someone's done the clever work for me. Someone has, <laughs> has, has sort of thought this thing through and make sure it makes sense. I really value because then I can just drop, drop them in wherever I need them. I can reskin them, reflavor them, you know, take what they've done and sort of in, inspire, you know, those rare moments when I do come up with something myself, uh, in terms of puzzles. Um, and I just like anything that expands the non-combat challenges for your fifth edition characters, uh, or to throw mm -hmm. at your fifth edition characters, I find really, really useful because it's sort of easy to come up with combat challenges, but not always easy to come up with ones that test the player skill, test their character's abilities and, and aren't necessarily uh, about like violent conflict. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. Um, well, uh, certainly, uh, our next section here has the tent has the, uh, the possibility of violent conflict, but, uh, let's move on to mm -hmm. the monster, uh, expansion here for, uh, that you have at DM skilled. Uh, tell us about, uh, about, about your pick here for, uh, for what monster book you want to have, <laughs> have DMs and players, uh, go peruse. Ooh, so, I mean, so for one, like the first things I went looking for, uh, uh on DM skilled were monster expansions and, and I, they've been my go-to, uh, products that I, I use and read and, and sometimes just inspired by the like, but the ones that I've I'm just the most excited about the one that I come back to constantly is uh, Hammond's Harvesting Handbook uh, by Jeffrey Yang. And I, what I love is like that <laughs> right in the beginning, there's just this little like, why, you know, why this book? Why are you reading it? What's the point of this book? And it's basically like as DMs, we've all been there. The, the big monster has just gone down. The party feels triumphant. They want their trophies. Someone goes. Can I make armor out of this? What what happens if I if I skin this dragon? Can I take the tail of that manticore and make a mace out of it? Can I, you know, and and I I like running games where as as much of the D&D world is integrated as possible, right? Like magic items exist in D&D, right? Someone made them, they're creations, they're in-world creations, right? So like the DMG suggests that maybe there's a monster or something that the party could go get something from to help make this magic item. And the harvesting handbook takes that a step further and goes like, not only that, we'll tell you what magic items are useful <laughs> based off of this monster's parts, what else you can make with them, what new stuff you can make with them that, that we've included in the appendix. Like it, it'll tell you what's in this creature's pocket. If they're a humanoid and, and aren't necessarily a, a monstrous creature that you want to butcher and cut up and skin and I mean, unless you're running like a proper evil game, um, just the fact that there has not been a single time I've played D&D &D across any edition, any variant, any version with so many different groups where someone didn't go, what can I make out of this monster's corpse? And... I just, I, I love a book that just says like, Hey, I, we've thought of this, right? Yeah. We've been through each monster in the monster manual, come up with stuff that you could use and, and presented it with, uh, the a good combination of like, m you know, mechanical expression and, uh, inspiration fuel. But yeah. You, you know, you could almost run a whole campaign off of this one book alone, right? Of, of hunting monsters, uh, for their individual uh, ingredients that they would give you. Um, and, and in that sense, I really feel like this book has a lot to offer, uh, for, uh, for fifth edition groups. Oh yeah. Because, uh, an on keg can't just be chitinous plates. Like there's gotta be more there. I mean, they're spitting <laughs> acid. You, you gotta, you know, there's gotta, again, there's gotta be more. One thing I do love, mm -hmm. and I'm disappointed that they put it as an optional rule, but <laughs> the carcass degradation light table it's not really a table it's just kind of like a you know after a day after a few days after a week like uh -huh, like uh -huh. what <laughs> is usable and what is lost in a carcass because especially when you think like magical creatures there's all kinds of extra like acids chemicals going on there and when that starts yeah. to break down it's got to happen like worse like it's got to you don't right yeah you don't want to get near what spawns from a you know a a a, a, a decomposing like black dragon carcass just no no you yeah but for, i mean for one right and i think it really um one of the things that this this book does that that maybe intentional maybe not is sort of like really highlights the magical nature of a lot of these creatures and the fact that like 
they they exist these things you know they, they have a physicality to them right and you can either go the direction that the harvesting handbook does and like okay we're going to take the wings off <laughs> this creature and the glands from this and i'm going to take basilisk's eyes and you know or the plates from an iron golem and and you know do this with it or but you can also just sort of like read through it and think of like okay well what happens if no one came along and harvested this like what problems would this cause you know if a giant cre if a creature the size of a hill just like up and died and then no one took care of it like what creatures are attracted to this thing to, to eat it afterwards like mm -hmm. is there any of the locals going to come along and pick it clean from after the adventurers are gone like there's so many things that you can uh you know be inspired by from from this one that um like i said it it, it easily tops my like i just want to read something for fifth edition and be inspired to uh to run mm -hmm. a game um so yeah love this one yeah I'm I'm imagining like a John Wick style like cleanup crew scenario mm. where the adventurers call this group to come and clean things up for a finder's fee, right? And, right. Uh, like that would that would be a fun uh, that would be a fun campaign to run for a low level that are dealing with higher level creatures that are dead, but then all of the carrion uh, and and you know. Uh, every every beast that would come along and want to take a nibble off that you got to fight those uh -huh. off and so right you know you're not dealing with a dragon you're dealing with things that will eat the dragon's carcass so that's right. that's uh <laughs> and all the while you got to you know hey you got time you got time limits here we got to have this done in like three days otherwise right, we can't right. get the heart you know <laughs> something terrible is going to happen yeah yeah yeah, yeah good times good times <laughs> but yeah it's a that, that is certainly a, a fun addition to the uh to monster lore for sure um a couple of other uh a couple of other uh honorable mentions here we have a, a dm options book for monster talents this is a this is if you want to just like have a book full of new abilities that you can customize your own the monsters you're already using but just you know Add a little of this and a little of that and a little sugar mm -hmm. and spice, and it makes everything nice for your monsters. Uh, Very much so. Very much so, yeah. Uh, another one that I really enjoy is um, is the 100 Monster Hunts, uh, a sort of similar uh, vein of, of, like, getting the most use out of the monsters that you already have. Um, and so 100 Monster Hunts by Val Cyrene is is really great because it provides a way to, like, create short little side quests and bounty hunts and, and, and sort of job board quest board style uh, adventures based around monsters. And I think like coupled with the handbook can be a really interesting way to have a very monster hunter centric game, which of course, as we all know, that's the only thing D and D can do. It's the only thing the game's about. Uh, mm -hmm. So <laughs> might as well get the most out of it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Toss. Yeah. Toss a bounty to your witcher. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Once again, folks, this video was sponsored by DMs Guild, uh, but use the code WebDMGuild right here at the bottom uh, to get 15% off $15 or more on DM Guild Community Creator PDFs. And that is from April 5th through the 12th. Uh, please use it and enjoy. Uh, and thank you. doors to my perception have been opened I am seeing the world clearly and I'm ready this is